you know a 10 year old boy was going around the homes this is in the US and he was selling pencils and then you can imagine a 10 year old boy going from house to house selling pencils one adult man where he went to sell wanted to know what are you why 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 are the why are the exercise this is what the boy said he said i want to raise 6000 6, million dollars to build a hospital in our city. Big dream from my young brother. Six million dollars to build a city, to build a hospital in their city. The man, the adult, look at the young boy and ask, and ask the boy. That's a very big project for, from, for a young man like you. This, is, this was the response of the boy. He said, you know what? I have a friend who is helping me. This has been the year of exploits. Every Sunday we are told that this is the year of exploit. And maybe as we have continued to be challenged. And you are told to ask for the moon. And you have been told. You know you have been pulling your faith. And only you and God knows what you have asked him. And maybe it looks such a big dream for a sister like you or a brother like you. But I've got good news for you this morning. I know you have a friend who is helping you. His name is Jesus. And you know, every dream, every dream is valid, including yours. Don't allow anybody to discourage you as you continue asking for your moon because you have a friend who is helping you. And blessed are those who have a friend who is seeing, who is standing by their side as they pursue their dream. And I'm telling my friend, you know my dream. Only me and Jesus. And maybe my nearest neighbors, maybe once in a while, maybe I don't know in prayer or in just talking, they happen to overhear. And it's okay. So that they also be witnesses. They have been telling us to to greet one or two people, tell them you are my witness. Yes, I know I've got witnesses in the house. I want us to read together a very long passage in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 20. And I would uh, suggest we read in New American Standard Bible. Second Chronicles 20. Maybe you can screen it up for us and then we read. In fact, we'll all read. So that we may, you know now if you read from your Bible, you have another version. Now there's confusion. You finish your sentence before us or we finish before you. Why can't we read together there? So let's read together. All of us, if you can read, let's all read. It's, it's a long passage, but it will help you to concentrate and understand as we share the word of God this morning. Let's read together. The Moabites the Ammonites, and with them the Meunites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. It was told Jehoshaphat, a great multitude has come against you from beyond the Dead Sea, from Edom. And behold, they are in Hazazon, Tama, which is Engedi. Then Jehoshaphat feared and set himself determining as his vital need to seek the Lord, he proclaimed a fast in all Judah. And Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord, yearning for him with all their desire. And Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new and said, O oh Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? In your hand are power and might, so that none is able to withstand you. Did not you, O oh our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people, Israel, and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend. 
They dwelt in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, If evil comes upon us, the sword of judgment or pestilence or famine, we will stand before this house and before you for your name and the sabre of your presence in this house and cry to you in our affliction and you will hear and save. And now, behold the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came from the land of Egypt. And when they... Behold, they reward us by coming to drive us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O our God, Will you not exercise judgment upon them? For we have no might to stand against this great company that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Verse 13. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their children and their wives. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jael, and the son of Metania, a Revite of the sons of Asaph in the midst of assembly. He said, Hearken, all ye Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, the Lord says this to you, Be not afraid or dismayed at this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down to them. Behold, they will come up by the ascent of Aziz, and you will find them at the head of the ravine before the wilderness of Jeruel. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Take your positions, stand still, and see the deliverance of the Lord who is with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow, Go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshipping him. And some Rephites of the Kohathites and the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel, with a very loud voice. And they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe and remain steadfast to his prophets, and you shall prosper. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers to sing to the Lord, and praise him in their holy priestly garments as they went out before the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and loving kindness and do us free. The Lord set abushments against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were self slaughtered for suspecting betrayal, the men of Ammon and Moab rose against those of Mount Seir, utterly destroying them. And when they had made an end of the men of Seir, they all helped to destroy one another. And when Judah came to the watchtower of the wilderness, they looked at the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies, foreign to the earth, and none had escaped. And when, when Jehoshaphat, for themselves, more than they could carry away, so much they were three days in gathering the spoil. On the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Barak. There they blessed the Lord. So the name of the place is still called the Valley of Belaka, Blessing.
Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem, Jehoshaphat leading them to Jerusalem with joy, for the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. Buona sifiwe. I want to believe maybe if you have never read that story from the beginning to the end, you have refreshed your memories. And the story is very exciting. And as I said earlier, this has been the year where we've been talking about exploits and how God will do extraordinary things to you and how God will partner with us. And in front of us this morning, we have, we have read of a story where really, even if you wanted to ignore the, the happening, you just had to see. In the previous chapter, this is a story of Jehoshaphat. In chapter 19, with which we are not going to read because of time, the Bible talks about Jehoshaphat putting systems in place. He appointed judges. Maybe you can read this in your own time in the, in the previous chapter, chapter 19. He, he, he appointed judges, that is in verse 6 and 7, and gave them a charge. And told them they should do it as unto the Lord. Because God will not start biased judgments. He also appointed and ordained and prayed for some um, priests. The Revites. Actually in verse 9 it says, Amaria was, was appointed as the chief priest. To be overall in Lord's matters. Zebadiah, son of Ismael, was in, to be in charge of the king's matters. And the rabbis was to serve as officers. So in chapter 19, before this story we have just read, Jehoshaphat was very busy putting systems in place because you never know about tomorrow. Just like you and me, we don't know what will happen. We are only sure of now. But he had put people in charge. And everybody had a, had a job description. And I like the clarification that so and so you are to be in charge to be overall in Lord's matters. And you, you are to be in charge of the king's matters. And you, Revites, you are going to serve as officers. There was to be order. Everybody had a job description. And because we are in one of the principles of... Um, Management is planning. They also say that success is where an opportunity finds a prepared person. Success is where opportunity meets preparedness. And we, we can see Jehoshaphat wanted to be successful, just like you and me would want to. We want exploits this year. But there is something maybe we can run from Jehoshaphat. That there is need for you to put your house in order. Don't become a kikuyu where it is said kikuyus run when it's almost dark. But I refuse to be that kikuyu. I refuse popularity, popular thinking. I want to be a Christian. I want to be prepared. I want when that opportunity comes, I'll be ready for it. I'll seize it. I'll run with it. And there... I will do an act that cannot be ignored because I will be prepared. And therefore, as you position yourself for great exploits, plan and prepare. Build your capacity. You never know when the opportunity will knock the door. You know, it is said, opportunities usually present themselves as challenges or like an overall. It looks like it is work. And therefore, even as we position ourselves for exploits in 2014, there is need for all of us to put on opportunities scanning glasses. I repeat again. You need to put on an opportunity scanning glass that you see beyond what looks tiresome or demanding. You will seize it and there will be your exploit. And very quickly, I would want us to run a f take a few lessons from the story we have just read. I was just giving you a background of how prepared Jehoshaphat was 
as the king of Israel. And in the story we have read, there are several things we can learn this morning. What we have just read was Jehoshaphat God got a winning battle plan. And I know I am talking to people who are waiting upon God to hear the battle plan that will work. A battle plan that will work out for your situation. And there are a few lessons we can learn from the story of Jehoshaphat. One, lesson number one. Challenges will come unexpectedly. Challenges will come unexpectedly. You realize in, in the previous chapter, as I've told you, Jehoshaphat had put things, systems in place. And I definitely he didn't know about this. It was so unexpected. And that's why we read, it was told Jehoshaphat, a great multitude has come against you from beyond the sea, from Edom. You know, I want to tell you this morning, let us be ready. Because it, was, it presented itself as a challenge. As we read in the story, you realized how Je Jehoshaphat was shaken. He feared when he got the news. But when we were adding, we were all very excited. Weren't we? How it ended. That they were not even able to correct the spoil. It took them three days. But if you read the beginning verses and the last verses, we need to get a few lessons what happened between the two. Between the, 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 the challenge and the outcome. Lesson number two. Kaidri put on the next one. You know what? I am here to remind us that God has a specific battle plan for each challenge. It may not, by the way, be a challenge. He has a battle plan for that exploit which looks like a mountain for you. If you follow the instructions, just like the doctors tell us, Follow the, the instructions carefree. If you follow the instructions, your battle plan will work out. You, the outcome of your battle plan will be a great exploit, a great success, a, a real prosperity. And I know we, have all, we all want to position ourselves for great exploits. When Jehoshaphat was told that the, the ites, you know, you realize there were the Moabites, Ammonites, Timurisa, Manakina, Nani, Wengine? Moabites. By the way, I don't know why the Bible has a lot of ites. The Jebusites, Americites, the Moabites, the Ammonites. And you know you are Moabites. You know you are Deceiseites. So you know them. Which is your height. You know your height. I'm here to tell you. When your neighbor. When you are told about that. Maybe sickness height. I'm at the current one. The digitalized one is maybe the headache. The joblessness night. Something like that. When Jehoshaphat was told about the height. That the ites were coming against him. He feared. But learn to seek the Lord. This morning I know I'm talking to people with many ites chasing you. Bereavement ites. Only you who knows. Lack of business. Lack of opportunity. It is dry. It is your ite. There is a battle plan that works. It works for Jehoshaphat. It can work for you. He ran to seek the Lord. I want to encourage somebody this morning. You can run and seek the Lord. Let's go to the next one. 
It is, no, it is no more to fear when danger rooms. But how you react to the fear makes the difference. And this is how Jehoshaphat responded. Jehoshaphat decided to seek the Lord. And I want you to help me by asking maybe your neighbor. Ask yourself, when trouble comes, do I run to the phone or to the throne? And do ask your neighbor, when trouble comes, do you run to the phone? The first thing that comes to your head is, whom can we call? Do you run to the phone or to the throne? There is a battle plan that works. I wish you can first of all run to the throne because that's where you will get specific instructions. You don't have do, to do trial and error. The Lord can reveal the battle plan for your challenge. We run to the throne before the phone. Why should we run to the throne? Going to God shows we honor and trust him. When we have trouble, let us develop a habit of learning to God instead of to the people. Seek the Lord rather than your own mind. Jehoshaphat knew he needed to hear from God. He needed a battle plan and only God could give him one that was sure to succeed. At the throne, he received guidance on the battle plan. He was given specific instructions and I would want us to read about the instruction in verse 17. These were the instructions. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position. Start firm and see the deliverance of the Lord. Deliverance the Lord will give you. O Judah and O Jerusalem, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow and the Lord will be with you. You know, if, ever, if he never went to seek the Lord, maybe he would have asked his in charges to go and find out how much amare they had. But you realize the battle plan was given. He didn't need to fight. The Lord gave different instructions. I want to encourage you. As you position yourself for exploits. Let's run. Even when you are given the first part of the instruction. Because the Lord would want to excite you as it glows day by day. Let us run to ask the Lord. Determined to hear from the Lord, he proclaimed a fast throughout the land for that very purpose. Did you note that among, in the instruction there was nothing like prayer and fasting? There is something I want to tell you this morning. The Lord will give you direction, but you have to partner. There will be the bet you will have to do. And I think when Jehoshaphat was told he doesn't have to fight, he thought, yeah, this is a spiritual warfare then. We can pray and fast. So there will be your part and there will be God's part. How I pray that you not keep on waiting upon God while God is waiting on you. You can imagine if Jehoshaphat, when he was told you don't need to fight, he just decided to continue studying there. There were instructions. He was told to go, to go tomorrow. However, before they went, he decided it's good to prepare. And this is a prepara preparation which we have just read, which he did. The other lesson we can learn is that knowledge of God's character will help you position yourself for the exploit. There is need, and I think it is coming up from the time we were given our theme verse, that it is them that know their God who will do exploits. It is recurring now and then. Jehoshaphat knew that God was almighty and he was the God of heaven. He knew God's character. My brother, you need to know that God is God. God is in heaven. God is almighty. He knew that God was ruler of all the kingdoms, including the, Ammo the Ammonites, the Moabites, the and the Menaites. He knew. He knew 
The arm of flesh can fail him. And that's why he didn't want to trust in man. He also knew that God is just and cannot repay good with evil. He had read his Bible or he had listened to his teachers and he had been told these Moabites who are now coming against him, God had refused the Israelites to finish them. And now they were coming to repay evil, good with evil. They had been spared, but now they were coming to draw them out. So he presented his case before God and said, you are even aware that you never allowed my forefathers to move them out. And therefore, I am sure God, you are so just, you cannot just allow them. There is need for us to know God's character. There is need for you to know the promises of God. There is need for you to know, to have some reference points of what God has done in the, has ever done. And keep on referring to him. Are you, can you imagine, did you notice the many questions he asked God? Aren't you the one? You know, it's like he wants God to commit himself. You said this, and it is okay to remind God what he has said. How I pray that all of us can know what God has to say regarding your situation. And then you rehearse it back to him. God, you have said this. God, you have promised this. And I know you don't change. He also did something else. He acknowledged that God had been good. He rehearsed to God what he had done. Let's see verse 7. What the verse 7 says. Oh, our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? Verse 8. Let's see verse 8. They have lived in it and have built in a sanctuary for your name, saying. This he knew. He could quote to God what, it is, what, he, what the, the forefathers had, say, had said. If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword or judgment or pride or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress and you will hear us and save us. He reminded God what he had said. And he knew God's promises. Aye and amen. There is need for you to know God's promises regarding your situations. There is need for you to keep on remembering what God has done because he has done you good. Another lesson we can run with is that attitude to, your attitude towards God will determine how well you will win that battle. In verse 12, this is what Jehoshaphat said. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. You know, sometimes you don't have to... Somebody said, why it is good to live by faith is... When you live by faith, you leave the how to God. I come again. When you choose to believe in God, how he will meet your need... You leave it, the how? You leave it to God. When you don't want to live by faith and you want to do a lot of working, then you take over even the job of thinking how. And many times you'll burn your fingers. I want to encourage you this morning, your attitude that God, is, you may not have an answer right now, but God. When they, he realized they didn't know what to do and acknowledged that before God, at least he knew a few things that he can do. I told you this is a partnership. The battle plan will be a partnership. At least he knew. I may not know how we will beat the, the, all the heights, but at least I know something we can do. And these are some of the things he came about. He came up with. They can do. He knew one. They needed to trust God because they had no might against their enemies. They did not know what to do. They needed to have their eyes focused on God. You focus your eyes on God. And when you focus, somebody
God said, what you focus on becomes bigger and greater. When you focus on God, he will look, not look, he will bring certain revelation and for sure you'll see he's greater, he's bigger, he's overall and you can dare trust him even more. When they did this, oh, I'm telling you my brother, when you focus on God and leave the how to him, he had the answer for Jehoshaphat. And he was told what to do. Maybe you can, and this is what the Lord responded with the powerful assuring words. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Take your positions, stand still, and see the deliverance of the Lord who is with you. Fear not, nor be dismayed. You focus on the Lord in your challenge. He will respond and you will get the assurance. Your attitude towards God will cause him to respond to your cry. He also realized there is something more they can do. They may not know how to fight the, the, the Moabites, but at least he knew they can worship God. And they actually did. When God responded, they all bowed their heads and faces to the ground before God. Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. When you focus on God and he responds to you, don't hit the ground running. There is need to bow down, acknowledge, and worship God. They were not in a hurry. When God responded, they worshipped God. And I like the way Jehoshaphat read, showed the way as their leader and they followed suit. Let's read verse 19 and 21. They worshipped God and in verse 19, they realized there is something more they could do. Then, some Revites from the Korahites. See, I told you there is a lot of ites in the Bible. The Korahites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. When God answered, Eh, Wali shout. When God does it for you, number one, don't forget to worship him. Number two, don't forget to praise him. He loves it. No wonder the Bible says he dwells in the midst of the praises of his people. When you worship God and praise him, he's more present. They praised God. Lesson number five. Respect and order in families enhances great exploits. Did you notice when Jehoshaphat called for the prayer and fast? The Bible says all Judah stood before the Lord with their children and their wives. I want to believe because the men are not mentioned here, they are being referred as the Judah. And then there were, in another version it talks with their babies the children and the wives. My brothers, men, I want to encourage you this morning. Even the Bible is referring to you as the Judah. When the, when the prophet called for the prayer and fasting, I want to believe the brothers said, the, the brothers of Judah, everybody, cross the doors, Mama Nyambura, by the way, he doesn't call me Mama Nyabura. <laughs> but I'm just saying this. I want to imagine the men of Judah said all of us, both big and small, male or female, we are all going to participate in prayer and fasting. Can you imagine? The babies, the children, the wives, we are going to seek the Lord. Why? You know what? When there is danger, it was told Jehoshaphat there was danger. But do you, th do you think it's only Jehoshaphat who would have been killed? It is everybody. 
when there is danger in your family, it will affect both big and small. Therefore, my brothers, I want to encourage you. Encourage your family members on godly things, godly issues. Because there is their place. Encourage your wives and children to go to the house of God. Lead the way. Role switching is out of order. I repeat again. Role switching. Role switching. Men, you read, we follow. Manas, if you were on Friday, you are reading, we will follow. Maybe now, maybe then there will be another one for the daughters of faith. But this one is for the men. You read. If there's a brother seated next to you, tell, tell him. You are meant to read. And everybody else in your family will follow. You know, it's already Sunday. Sisters, bonus, if you were, yes. we want to be read. Oh, yes. You have to be readable too. Eh? Don't quote me. I don't know whether there's such an English word. Eh? But sisters, you have to be readable. You know others, you are told we go this way. You have five other ways you want to go. We want to be read. Jehoshaphat read his family, all the families of Judah, and there was great victory. My brothers, you are the family priest. Function as such for the security of your families. You are the priest. And God is calling upon us to be functional priests, not just titles. In the book of 1 uh, Samuel chapter 2, there is a very sad story of a priest by the name Eli. We might not read because of time, but in that story, there are, there are, he had sons. Phinehas and Hophni, sons of Eri. If you read in 2 Samuel 22 to 25, maybe we can read very fast as I try to wind up. 2 Samuel 22 to 25. Iko? Oh, chapter 2. Sorry. 2 Samuel. Chapter 2, 22 to 25. Eh? No, first Samuel. Sorry. First Samuel. I'm sorry about that. Now, Eri, who was very old, heard about everything his sons were doing to all Israel and how they slept with the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. So he said to them, Why do you do such things? I hear from all the people about these wicked deeds of yours. No, my sons, it is not a good report that I hear spreading among the Lord's people. If a man sins against another man, God may mediate for him. But if a man sins against the Lord, who will intercede for him? His sons, however, did not listen to their father's rebuke, for it was the Lord's will to put them to death. What am I trying to say? I am trying to say to the men in the house, there is need for you to mentor your sons, to mentor your daughters, to mentor your families. Show them the Lord's way. The Hophnis and the Phinehas were warned, but they never heeded. And they died. We don't want to die. We want to live and see the cathedral. We want to live and see the exploits. We want to live and see you in your new house. We want to live and see you in your big car. Let's tie up and align ourselves. Because we want to be safe. And we are safe in the Lord's hands. Verse, point number six. Your prophet determines your prosperity. We read that. You know, as I said earlier, danger was rooming to all people who are in Judah. It was told who? Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat ran to the Lord. He got a battle plan. When he passed over the information, the men, the children, the wives, they all came. They responded. Suppose they never responded. 
You can imagine what would have happened, yeah? We said we are partnering with God. And Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord, yearning for him with all their desire. They responded. They were called to come and seek the Lord, to come and pray and fast. They came. And there they got their freedom. The Lord fought for them. It matters how you take what you are told by your prophets. That is the word of God. Your prosperity, your breakthrough, is, there is a connection. Because by the time they come to tell you, they have listened from the Lord. So when you decide to dismiss them, it's at your own risk. Therefore, your connection, the connection, your connection with your prophet matters. And no wonder we read in, in verse 20. Maybe we can read it very fast. Again, it says, And Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord, yearning for him with all their desire. I want verse 20. 20. And they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe in and remain steadfast to his prophets, and you shall prosper. I pray that God will give you a hearing ear. That when you hear, you'll say for sure. There will be a connection. There will be a witness in you that it is the Lord speaking to you. Because once you obey, there is deliverance. You will be just be stepping in into your exploits. Next slide. Can I have the next slide? Thank you. The whole of Judah was in danger. Jehoshaphat came up with a battle plan. Everyone, and this was the plan. Everyone was to pray and fast. As they obeyed, God spoke through his servant. Their deliverance was linked to the words of their leader. And you know what? I'm not just talking about maybe the bishop or the pastor. Did you know that your cell, the cell leader is the voice of your bishop? The voice of your pastor? Your, lead, your coordinator in your group? They bring down. It is cascaded down. May God help us that we will learn to obey and respect and support our leaders. Because therein, lads, therein lies our freedom, our victory. Good networks are necessary for exploits. Good networks. At the very beginning, we read that uh, it was told Jehoshaphat. Who told him? Somebody. Meaning, he was connected. You need connections. May God give you destiny helpers. You need networks. There are some of you who will pursue a network and therein it will lead you to your exploit in 2014. Therefore, good networks, healthy networks, Jehoshaphat had healthy relationships with the people he was leading. And that is why he was given this information. Let's go to the next. He summoned the whole of Judah and they turned up to pray and praise. And implement the battle plan. People are the most valuable assets we have. You can travel to many places without money just because you have got healthy relationships and good networks. In this year of exploits, I pray that there are no exploits for own ledgers. You need your brothers, you need your sisters. May the Lord connect you. May you become the destiny helper to your brother, to your sister. Present yourself where you are expected. Therein lies your freedom. One as if you will. And as we wind up, victory is assured when God is involved. Our sister Sarah read for us 
that we don't have a high priest who is distanced. He understands. When you involve God, victory is assured. And that is why it is very exciting. The enemies got confused, rose against one another, and slaughtered each other. May the Lord bring confusion at the, your enemy's camp until they start slaughtering one another. They were trying to plan evil for you, and then they themselves, they are confused. How I pray there will be confusion in the enemy's camp. They got so much spoil, it took three days to gather. They were overjoyed. And when they were overjoyed, can we see verse 25? They continued praising. When the Lord gets you there, don't be in a hurry. How I pray that you will praise him more than ever before. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take the spoil, they found among them much cattle, goods, garments, and precious things which they took for themselves, more than they could carry away. So much they were three days in gathering the spoil. Verse 26. On the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Beraka. There they blessed the Lord. So the name of this of the place is still called the valley of Beraka, the valley of blessing. There is a version I read. And it is verse 26. It says, um, I want to read it in, yes. On the fourth day, they gathered in the valley of blessing, which got its name that, which got its name that day because the people praised and thanked the Lord there. May the Lord lead you to your valley of blessing. Amen. And when you get there, may you praise him until the enemy knows you have been blessed. Amen. When the Lord remembers you, let even your enemies know he has come. Amen. Let's read verse 27. Verse 27. Then, led by Jehoshaphat, all the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned joyfully to Jerusalem. For the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. May the Lord give you a cause to rejoice over your enemies. Amen. May he present a table in front of your enemies. Amen. May the Lord keep you until when he does it, even your enemies will join you in the thanksgiving service. Amen. You know, some, when it is exploit, notable things, they will not be hidden. They will see both your friends and your enemies. When you organize for that meeting, I pray that even the enemies will find their way just to come and be witnesses of what God can do. When the Lord leads you to the valley of blessing, I pray that you will remember he has done it. And you know what? We can make a few, we can make some of this declaration. The valley of blessings became their destination. What had started as a challenge that the Moabites, the Amorites, they are coming against you, led them to the valley of blessing. A valley of blessings awaits everyone who will partner with God. How I pray that each one of us is going to partner with God. Let's all stand up. I want to make a few declarations. And if you're in agreement, you say yes. If you're in agreement, you say amen. amen. May God always cause you to know what your enemies are planning against you. Amen. May the information leak out. Amen. So that you not be caught unawares. May God always cause the enemy's plans against you to backfire. Amen. May God become your first choice consultant when in imminent danger. Amen. May the throne become your first option. Amen. 
May your destiny help us locate you with speed. Amen. May your enemies help to destroy one another. Amen. May none of your enemies escape. Amen. And may you gather so much to the overflow. Amen. And when he has done all this, may he receive all the glory. Amen. May he receive all the glory. Amen. And may the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen.